All right, I think we are all set to uh, get started today and uh, really excited about the topic and we had a lot of interest for this topic so I'm glad to see there's lots of people showing up. Um, and if everyone wants to start by just typing in some questions, uh, we will have a question and answer period at the end. But if there's anything that anybody really wants to see addressed uh, throughout the presentation, please uh, type in your questions now and I'll try to answer those as best I can as we go through. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to do a presentation and then what I'll do is I'll hop out into AdWords and uh, actually demo uh, what I mean by some of these things so that you can actually see uh, how to get your first uh, campaign set up. So uh, a couple housekeeping things before we get going. Uh, this webinar is being recorded uh, and we will have it uh, available hopefully uh, maybe today but definitely by tomorrow available on our YouTube channel which is youtube.com slash ringpartner or you can go to our blog at ringpartner.com slash blog and uh, we'll also have it available on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter as well. So feel free to follow us there uh, at ringpartner at all of those uh, different social media outlets. So uh, I see uh, a couple uh, questions coming in just about uh, through the campaign process. So yes, I will definitely walk you through that and there will be a recorded version, uh, like I said, immediately after. Uh, I got a question here about, uh, is Google still okay with single landing page with just the phone number, no other links? Uh, yes, and you'll see when I go through the presentation, you'll see um, uh, some of those uh, features and how, how that's done and how we're setting those up. Uh, and if anyone is looking to contact us, just feel free to email contact at ringpartner.com. All right, so we will get started and then we'll do some more questions at the end and I'll try to answer them throughout. I'll try to take a peek at those questions and see if we can uh, help you with those. So uh, like I said, Q&A at the end, so stick around for that. Uh, I am your host and presenter. Uh, my name is Mike Williams and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Ring Partner and we are broadcasting from uh, beautiful Victoria, BC in Canada, and it's currently sunny uh, with a few clouds outside, so it's a, a pretty good day, and uh, a good day to learn a little bit more about uh, Google's new call-only ads, uh, which I'm excited to talk about, and I'm excited for everyone to uh, learn more about. So with that, uh, we'll get we'll get into it. So back in uh, February of 2015, Google announced uh, their new call-only campaigns, which would be set up to drive uh, clicks or calls specifically from mobile-only sources. So this is something that uh, Google has obviously recognized their clients need. Uh, and this is a quote that I got from the, the blog post there. Uh, With smartphones in hand, consumers are increasingly looking for products or services while on the go and then placing a call right away. In fact, 70% of mobile searches call a business directly from search results, which is a great sign for all of us mobile marketers, all of us paper call marketers out there looking to drive more calls to our clients, or if you're a business, you know, you're looking for more calls. So it's great to see that, you know, 70% of mobile searches turn into a call or have users that are directly looking to uh, call from those results. So it's a good sign for all of us, and it's good to see that Google has recognized the need. Uh, and... As marketers, we have known that we, we've needed this uh, for quite some time. Uh, it's something that we've wanted. It's something that uh, is really necessary for us to have the ability to drive calls for our clients. And so this is another quote from the post just saying that call-only campaigns are specially designed to only show on mobile devices that can make phone calls. This means every click you pay for uh, can be a phone call to your business. Uh, and in our case, it's a lot of times it's going to our clients. And it's something that we've needed. I think we've struggled using the call extensions and trying to get mobile only or mostly mobile traffic with the new uh, enhanced campaigns. So finally, Google sees that marketers need this as well. And, uh, you know, it's a good sign, I think, again, for all of us in the, the paper call, click to call and, you know, call driven marketing business. So. So once you're uh, ready to set up your first uh, call only campaign, it's. Uh, it's fairly easy, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you, you know, how you can actually set them up or how you can convert them. So uh, first step is really to select the call-only uh, uh, radio button within the campaign settings. 
Uh, and you can do this with new or existing campaigns. So as you're going through the new process, you can uh, select uh, to have a call-only campaign, but you can also take an old campaign, maybe one that you've been trying to get mobile-only clicks and calls through the call extensions, and you can uh, convert them over to call-only campaigns. And then uh, one other thing I always recommend uh, with uh, call-only campaigns, and even if you're using call extension, is to uncheck the Google search partners. A lot of those search partners don't have click-to-call capabilities, so uh, you're going to be wasting spend. There's going to be a lot of leakage there in your spend for uh, clicks that are not going to turn to calls. So with that, I'm just going to quickly jump over to Google AdWords and uh, show you uh, what, that, what that looks like. So if you're in uh, your AdWords account, I've just got a demo account here, and I've got a campaign set up, uh, simply click on your campaign, uh, navigate to the Settings tab for the campaign, and then in the Type of Campaign right here, you'll be able to click that, and you'll set it to Call Only. And so once you've done that, that's the first piece uh, in converting an existing campaign over to Call Only. Uh, and yes, I do want to switch it over. And then the next step will be adding your ads, but we'll get into that a little bit more uh, soon because uh, you need to actually have call-only specific ads. You can't use the old text ads with call extensions. So you can do it that way, or you can also, uh, from the Campaigns tab, you can create a new campaign. And I believe we want Search Network Only. And then from here, you would... Oops, sorry. Oops. Uh, so from here, you you want to select the uh, search network only, and then over on the right here, just check this little uh, radio button here for call only. And then you've you've started the process, and then you'll work through there. And again, unclick these search partners because a lot of them just don't have the click to call capabilities that you need, and there'll be a lot of wasted spend and visitors hitting your landing page, which in this case you don't want. Uh, so back to the presentation here. Um, so we've gone over that. Uh, and again, with these new campaigns, there's no need for mobile bid adjustments, so you don't have to do that little bit of math trying to figure out how do you get more mobile clicks. Uh, in about you know 90% of the campaigns I'm running that are call-only, we're getting only mobile clicks. So it's a really good sign to see. You get the odd uh, you know computer or uh, tablet traffic coming through, but uh, Google has really done a good job of ensuring that this is only uh, for mobile traffic at this time. And ad extensions are unnecessary, and in fact, the ad extensions tab will be removed from your campaign when you're looking uh, at all the settings. So as I mentioned, the second part of uh, setting up your call-only campaign is to set up your call-only specific ads. And so these are a little bit different. There's a couple new things involved with setting up a call-only ad, and we'll just run through that and show you exactly how to, how to get those set up. So again, use, use standard best practices. Uh, try to use all of the characters that you can within the ad text. Uh, 25 for the headline, 35 for, oh sorry, 25 for headline is not, it's uh, actually called business name. But there's a description line, one and two, and you have 35 characters each. And then remember to use the display URL uh, for your inserting keywords or, or calls to action in there. And I'll explain that when I show you uh, how to create a text ad. So using standard best practices, and then uh, your call-only ads then become the call extensions. So you're going to include your tracking phone number within the ad uh, rather than uh, creating call extensions separately. And uh, another new feature is you're adding business name. So in place of the headline, you'll put your business name. Uh, and in most cases, what Google does, or from what I've seen, most of the time is what they do is that for the headline, they put the actual phone number. And then whether you click the phone number headline or the uh, click to call button that comes with your ad, sometimes uh, it will both go to the phone and you shouldn't get any visitors to your landing page. So another field that's added to these text ads is phone number. And this is key to setting up your uh, correct tracking phone number there. Uh, and you want to make sure that that is accurate. Uh, and verification URL, that replaces the destination URL. And uh, my guess is that they're using that for quality score as well uh, to go in and make sure that your page is relevant to the ad groups and the keywords. So uh, you will need a destination URL that is accurate and 
um, sorry, verification URL that is the same as your display URL that you'll use. And uh, I'll show you uh, how all this works. And then the second part of that, which I'll, which, I'll, which I'll demo a little later, is to append a conversion to the ad text. So you'll want to set up your conversions within the Tools tab uh, of Google, and we'll run through that as well. Uh, and a bit of a sad note uh, right now is that AdWords Editor can't uh, currently handle call-only ads. And the only update we've gotten from Google regarding this is that it's coming soon and to watch for a blog post. So hopefully it's coming sooner rather than later, uh, but unfortunately at this time it's a lot of copy and pasting uh, or you know just running through and creating um, call-only text ads. So it's a bit of a challenge, a bit of an uphill battle, but you know from what we found from the results from call-only ads, it's definitely uh, a path worth uh, worth taking. So I'll show you how to uh, set up a call-only ad. I'll show you what that looks like. So just switch back to Google AdWords. And we'll just go into this existing campaign. And I believe I converted this. So once you're here, uh, you you want to create a new call-only ad. So you can see it looks a little different than uh, text ads. Uh, so you want to put in your, your business name uh, and your phone number. So if we were to do, I've just got this site set up, this... Uh, Call, callbabysitters.com uh, site quickly set up here. So we can put in this phone number, and that's the thing is that this phone number here that's on the button also has to match the phone number that's used here. So what we've been doing for uh, business name is putting in the dom a similar name that matches the, the domain. So call babysitters. We would then use this, oops, use this phone number. Uh, which the phone number on this button is a Ring Partner Invoca generated uh, tracking phone number. So we just make sure that the do the phone number on the landing page site matches what's used uh, in the ad extension uh, within the text ad. So we'll just put that in. It was eight five five nine zero one three five eight eight. So once we've got that added in, then we can get into our text ad. Uh, and so you've got a full set of characters. This is probably one of the things that's the most similar to the old way of doing text ads. You've got 35 characters. So it's a good opportunity to uh, write, write out your, oops, your text ad and try to use as many of the characters as you can. So looking for local babysitters, call. Call now to find a sitter tonight. Uh, and then we've got the display URL. So this is going to have to match with this domain here. So it's got to be callbabysitters.com. And then we'll just copy and paste the domain into the verification URL, which was the destination URL. Uh, and so that's that's pretty straightforward. The next part is uh, you want to set up your tracking correctly. So uh, you want to use this Google forwarding number, and what that does is replace this phone number here with one of Google's tracking numbers in the ad, so that what you'll see won't be your actual phone number, but it will forward through that so that it will be able to track the ad text, the ad group, the keyword, all the information related to the campaign or the conversion uh, that occurred on your campaign so you can better optimize uh, for performance for your campaign. So uh, once you've done all of this, you'll be able to uh, go down here and you want to report conversions. And I'm going to show you how to set up conversions. Uh, but you'll want to choose a conversion action. So we'll say, you know, maybe it's calls that from ads that convert after 120 seconds. You could do 120 or you could do 121. And then you would just hit save ads. And we're finding that it takes. Uh, about a day, one business day, to get an ad approved. Sometimes it's a lot faster, um, but it does take time because Google will go and review it. And I'll go over in more detail how the conversion tracking works, as well as how to make sure that you get your ads approved, because uh, it can be a bit of a dance with Google sometimes to make sure that you get your ads approved.
So, but that's that's essentially setting up your first call only ads right there. So we've covered all of this. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, you want to append that conversion to ad text, so we will get into into that shortly. And so with these call-only ads, it can be, like I said, a bit of a dance, a bit of a trial and error, but I want to save you some time and avoid uh, having a lot of your ads disapproved. So this is what we found works well uh, for getting your ads approved. Uh, like I said, you know, for that business name, what we put in is something similar to the domain. So if it's called Babysitters, we put that in as the, the domain, or sorry, as the business name, and that seems to work. Google seems to like that. Uh, this was directly from Google's policies. You want the, the phone number to be active, accurate, and relevant. So the phone number needs to work. It needs to connect to somebody. It can't connect to a busy signal. Uh, and you want it to be accurate, so make sure you've got exactly the right numbers in there, and then a relevant number, so make sure that you've got, uh, if it's a babysitter campaign, that it's going to babysitters, not going to dentists or lawyers. Uh, something else to note is there's no fax numbers, which would, of course, be a bad idea, uh, but no premium numbers as well, so no 1-900. So it shouldn't be a problem if you're using Ring Partner and you're using uh, Invoca numbers, we don't have 1-900 numbers, but that's just something to note. Make sure you don't uh, put those in there. Uh, you need to provide that verification URL and make sure that matches with your display URL, and that's for Google's, uh, I assume it's for quality score, but it's also just for approval and making sure that you own uh, the domain that you're using. And then uh, there's a couple different ways to verify your phone number, but you need to verify it with Google. And what they're basically looking for here is to verify ownership of the site to prove that you own that site and that you can make changes to it if needed. And I'll get into that uh, shortly. So verifying your phone numbers, this is key to uh, getting your, your ads and your campaign running and getting things approved. So there's three different ways that Google's identified that you can uh, get your phone number verified. So the way that we've been doing it and the one that we found the most easiest is to have identical landing page phone numbers used uh, that are also in your call-only ad extensions. So like I showed you with the call babysitters, um, site, make sure that the phone number on the landing page exactly matches uh, the extension number used in the call only ad. And also uh, link your AdWords and Google Webmaster account. So if you've got your site already set up with Google Webmaster and you've shown that you claim ownership of that, uh, you can just link Google Webmaster and AdWords. So you can go through and all of you add all of your sites to that uh, as well so that uh, Google knows, hey, this guy owns these landing pages and he's good to go. His, those, those sites are actually his. And that's really what Google's looking for is ownership uh, of those landing pages and domains. Uh, and the third option is to set up tracking for calls on the landing page. So what you would do there, and I'll, I'll run you through this, is uh, when you're setting up your conversion tracking, you will grab a snippet of code and you'll place that on your landing page and that essentially uh, shows Google that uh, you do own that site and you can make changes to the site so you own that uh, and that just allows them to uh, approve uh, the phone number. So I'll just quickly show you uh, how to set, you know, I've kind of showed you how to set up the identical landing pages but I'll just go over that quickly again and then I'll also show you how to set up tracking for, for calls on a landing page uh, or at least the first few steps of that. So, uh, like I said, make sure that this phone number here, 855-901-3588, matches exactly to the, to the uh, phone number that's on the domain or the verification URL that you're using. So, in this case, this number is exactly here. So, Google would approve this uh, and say that it is uh, good to go. Now, the other method for tracking uh, using the conversions on your site is actually done under the tools conversions section and what you'll do is create a new conversion for uh, tracking calls on your site so uh, create a new conversion you're gonna track phone calls and you're gonna track sorry you're gonna track calls 
uh, to a Google forwarding number on your website. So what this is going to do is take the phone number on your website and replace it with the Google tracking phone numbers that Google uses uh, directly on your site. So when the users visit it, they will call uh, the number that they see there. And then that will allow Google to track the keyword source, um, ad text, ad group, all that information that, that drove a conversion. So you hit continue, and then you would go through and, and give that a name. So tracking phone calls, um, enter a value. Uh, you, you can if you like. I uh, don't usually uh, set your duration, whatever it might be. It might be 60, 90 seconds, uh, and you're going to track unique conversions. Uh, you can leave the conversion window to 30. It's a lead and allow it for bid optimization. And I'll run through this uh, again shortly after just to show you how to set this up for uh, conversion tracking for text ads. Uh, but once you hit save and continue, uh, then it's going to give you this snippet of code that you'll then place on your site. And there is still other code involved uh, in order to get this to, to work. There's some other uh, script that you'll need in order to actually uh, track on Google. Uh, with Google forwarding numbers on your own landing page. But once you place this on your page, you should be able to prove to Google that, hey, I own this page, I can make edits to it, uh, and your phone numbers should be approved. And I think what that will do is allow you to, I know a lot of people want to try different landing, different phone numbers on different landing pages, uh, so it allows you to try some different things um, in order to track phone numbers because you may not want just a static phone number uh, on the site. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if not, you know, feel free to contact, uh, send an email to contact at ringpartner.com and we'll try to help you out with setting that up for uh, Google tracking for calls on your landing page. So I really want to uh, ensure that everybody knows how to track call-only ads because it's the key to making uh, your campaign successful. So um, I'll go over a little bit what I just went over there with the tracking for phone, uh, phone calls uh, through the extensions. So I'll go over that uh, a little more in depth. But what you're going to do is, is set up tracking from those call extension phone numbers. You want to set the call length. And uh, this is uh, up to you how you want to set this up. If the, if the call converts after 90 seconds, that means that only calls that are 91 seconds long are actually conversions. So you can choose whether you want to do 90 seconds or 91 seconds to determine the actual conversion. And you want to set it up for unique conversions. Otherwise, re repeat callers will also be tracked uh, as conversions. And uh, that will lead to inaccurate results. And allow for bid optimization. You may want to set up your uh, campaign to allow for Google to do some of the optimization for you. You can set a CPA and then choose which, um, let Google choose which ads to show when and how to optimize your campaign and, and uh, you know, hopefully set it and forget it and let Google do all the work for you. Uh, one thing to note is it's definitely not perfect. Uh, usually when campaigns are lower volume, Google is showing these phone numbers sporadically uh, and it can be delayed. So if you're looking and you see only a handful of conversions uh, from yesterday's traffic. If you look back in a couple of days, you might see uh, 10 or 15 conversions that have, have actually come in at a later date. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it is a, you know, a work in progress, but also there's a limitation on numbers, so Google can't always show phone numbers. Um, but it, we found it to be uh, fairly useful. And then another thing to just note is that you're paying for clicks still. You're not paying for calls. So when you see clicks in Google, you may see 10 clicks. And when you log into uh, Ring Partners in Voca reporting, you may only see uh, one or two actual calls. And um, we're still, although this is call only campaigns, you're still paying for clicks on Google. And what that does is generate the call prompt on the mobile phone for the user to then select call to continue on and actually connect with the business. So just keep that in mind that there will be a discrepancy in your stats from clicks to calls, but you can also look at the dimensions tab within Google to see the actual calls and you can see some more information uh, in there. So I'm just going to quickly switch back over to AdWords and we will take a look at uh, setting up your, your call conversions. So we're back to this uh, uh, conversions spot and so if you're in your 
campaigns from the top level navigation what you'll see is this tools link so click that and go to conversions and then we will set up a new conversion and this time we're going to track phone calls again but we're going to set, select calls from ads using call extensions so this is specifically uh, going to tie this call extension tracking to your ad text so we just hit continue and then you can give it a name so we'll just call it call babysitters and we'll match it up with the the text ad Oops. Uh, and then uh, you can set a value if you like. I usually just say don't assign a value because I'm doing my tracking elsewhere. And uh, set the call length. So, you know, if this was converted at a minute and a half, we'd set it to 90 seconds. Or, like I said, if you want to try 91 seconds for more accurate statistics, you can try that because most calls will uh, convert after the um, 90 seconds has been reached. Uh, I, I like to track unique conversions. Uh, just because I don't want repeat callers or, you know, if, if one click leads to three um, different conversions in some way, I don't want to track that. I want to know which click drove a unique conversion. Uh, and you can open up this conversion window to as long as uh, 60 days, but I normally just keep it at 30 days. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty accurate. And uh, set it as a lead. And I leave it open to allow for bid optimization. Although we're not currently using the bid optimization strategy, if at some point I change my mind and we'd like to try that, then I want to have that ability to, to use the data collected from the conversions to allow for that. So we hit save and continue, which then creates the uh, call extension, or sorry, the call uh, conversion. So here's our our uh, conversion that we just created and you'll see no recent conversions but once those conversions start tracking uh, you'll be able to go in there and see that uh, everything is working fine so now if we go back to our campaign and what we're going to do is go to one of our ad texts and have a look at uh, we'll have to create a, a new one uh, because it's a call only text ad so go into your uh, ad group and select to create a new call only ad. So once we've, we've added all these fields, you scroll down to the bottom and you want to have this report conversions checkbox checked and then you would just select the conversion tracking that you want. So we're going to select call babysitters and then all of the settings are here in this Manage Conversion Actions tab so that you can go and check and make sure that you're selecting the correct conversion and tying that to your text ad. And so that doesn't just track for the text ad conversions, but it tracks keywords and ad groups and campaigns, so you'll be able to see all of that information in your reporting. So that's tracking uh, call-only ads. It's fairly uh, simple and uh, can be a really useful tool, and it's great for uh, increasing the performance of your campaign once you know what's, what's working within your Google campaign. So now I want to talk about uh, getting more calls from your call-only ads. This is something that comes up quite often where um, publishers or marketers are trying to uh, get more calls, and they're just not seeing them come through. So there's a couple uh, things that can lead to that that issue where you're just not getting as many calls as you may have expected. And probably one of the biggest things is that causes this is not having uh, ads that are related to the ad groups and keywords. And this is key to, this, to success for your Google AdWords campaign because you want to ensure that you have good quality score and Google's all about relevance. So when you're creating those ads, leave some room in there for uh, a spot to add in the keyword or something related to the keyword so that it's relevant to the ad so that when the user sees that, if they search for, uh, you know, find a dentist, if it says find a dentist within the ad text, they're going to be that much more likely to, to click through on the ad. And, um, you know, it just increases your, your click through rate, but also increases your, your call through rate for uh, campaigns that are call only. 
Something that uh, seems to work well is asking questions, uh, looking for a dentist, uh, need a babysitter, um, you know, things like that. But something about that, that prompting the user with that question uh, generates interest and hopefully you're the answer to that question or your client is. Uh, create urgency. So, you know, I like to use things like call now, call today, uh, in in part with, you know, taking an action. So call now and find a dentist or call today, find a dentist now. Uh, it does seem to help. It creates some urgency, uh, lets the user know that they can call right away or, you know, try things like call anytime if it's a 24-7 offer, uh, you know, call us now, call 24-7. That sort of stuff does uh, really help. And I know I've, you know, you can see it all over this. Uh, and I, you know, probably said it several times, but it, you're using a call to action and call is the action. So make sure that your users know that when they're clicking on an ad that they're going to be prompted to call. If they're going to click on the ad and think that they're going to go to a site, uh, it's not uh, going to be as, as good of a connection when they actually have the call prompt generated. So use call, call us, call now. Uh, call to speak to someone. You can try things like phone, phone us today, phone us now, but I think call is a little more impactful. And uh, try putting uh, your domain and using that slash in the display uh, URL spot for things like call now or call today. So um, something like call babysitters, it might say callbabysitters.com slash call now or call today uh, is a good spot. Uh, to, to try those sorts of things. Just make sure that you're using all of the ad tech space that you possibly can. And then create the need to call. So say things like call for a free quote or you know call only deals or call today to speak with someone or you know call us and, and chat now, whatever it might be. But you know create that urgency, create that need for people to, to call and know that they're going to a call when they actually click on the on the hyperlink, and then something that's worked out uh, well as well is using number with the keywords. So dentist numbers or locksmith numbers. These are people uh, that have the intent of calling someone. They're looking for the phone numbers for a specific service. So try that out. It may not be huge volume, but definitely good quality. These are people that are looking to call uh, a service. Um, so. Give that a shot. Uh, those usually work well. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about landing pages uh, because they they are important. They're important for Google's sake, uh, not necessarily for the user's sake. So keep that in mind. So uh, one of the most important things is to use your own landing pages. That's what Google's looking to verify. They're looking to know that you own those pages. So use your own landing pages. We highly recommend that. You have control. You have creative control over that stuff. Uh, if you're using someone else's or the advertiser's uh, site, it's it's not going to be um, good in the long term, especially if Google requires changes and you have no changes. They will lock your account. Make sure it's Google compliant. Make sure you know Google likes it. You're essentially creating a landing page for uh, Google's approval, so keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you're following all of Google's guidelines and terms as far as landing pages go. Uh, and someone had asked about the one-page landing pages, and uh, we've been we've been doing that and uh, haven't had any issues with that. So they are one-page landing pages with some content on there, but the only other uh, uh, stuff that we add there is also the privacy. So you want to have a policy privacy. Google is looking for that. You can have terms and conditions and have a contact us page. Make it easy for people to contact you. Put a physical address, whether it's a PO box or your actual office address, but make it uh, so that people can contact you. Google likes that and it will help your pages get approved. And make sure that you're focusing on relevance. Like I said, Google loves relevance. So make sure that you've added in your keywords from your ad groups uh, to the page and uh, help to create a page that you know will help you get a better quality score. And ultimately, that quality score will help you get a lower CPC and lead to a more successful campaign. And as you can see by my callbabysitters.com example, uh, it doesn't need to look good. Uh, we're not here to impress. You don't need to spend time on a designer. Those are that page was one that I created, and as you can tell, I don't have a lot of design 
or coding skills, uh, but it got approved and it was running uh, up quite quickly. So remember, it doesn't need to look good. Uh, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to have uh, everything that you need for Google to absolutely love it. So keep that in mind. Uh, and the key to that is remembering that users will not be visiting your pages. If everything goes well with your call-only campaigns, no one will visit your page. Uh, the odd time, you know, someone will you know, potentially type in your domain or save the page, but usually when they're clicking on the ads from the Google search results, they're going to directly connect to a phone number and speak to someone on the phone. So keep those things in mind. Uh, just a couple things to you know, make sure that your landing pages are compliant and they've got the right phone numbers on there. Uh, which will lead to approval of your campaign and uh, overall better performance uh, for your your campaign. So a couple things about the the future of call only. It's still pretty early on. Uh, this was only announced in February, so we expect um, you know big changes to to come with that. But one of the things that's kind of looming right now is in June 2015, uh, it will be the end of the just the phone number radio button checked uh, at call extension ads. So anybody who is using the old format of creating uh, regular uh, Google campaigns with the 300 plus bid modifier and uh, call ad extensions with just the phone number checked will be forced to create call only campaigns. And I think that's gonna really uh, shake up the marketplace a little bit. And if you're seeing low traffic on your call only campaigns, I think that this will uh, really impact that and force everyone to move over to call only and probably make a more even playing field because we're not sure how call only ads are interacting with existing campaigns or uh, the old just the phone number type uh, campaigns. So that will be coming to an end and I think we'll see more positive things from call only campaigns. Uh, and AdWords editor update, like I said, it's coming soon. We don't have word from Google when that will be, but I know that everyone uh, absolutely wants this and needs this and Google recognizes the need so I think it will be coming soon and what that will allow you to do is create more uh, bulk uh, ads and upload bigger campaigns because it's a real limitation when you have to manually create ads uh, so it's it's a it's a big issue but you know with anything that's worth doing um, it, it usually takes a little bit of effort in the start so if you adopt call only campaigns unfortunately you're gonna have to create those ads on your own uh, something that I think is happening is additional devices that can make calls. We know that you can make calls on a Mac or you can make calls through uh, Google's uh, chat tools or Google Talk. So I think once more devices uh, allow for calls to be made, I think call-only ads will be uh, more widespread and they'll be on more devices. Currently what we're seeing is uh, almost 100% uh, mobile traffic coming through. So. Uh, and this is just my own speculation, but I feel like Google will be eventually scanning the IVRs, the recordings, and, and maybe even the conversations of those calls to determine the quality score. Since no one's actually hitting that landing page, the quality score that they're currently getting from the URL is likely irrelevant. So I feel like at some point in the future, they will start scanning uh, for quality score and determining whether that phone call or the person that's answering that phone is actually relevant to the keywords that are being advertised. But that's just my own speculation and guessing. And then something that I think people are already becoming more comfortable with with calls so that we get less drop off when that call prompt is generated. But I think more and more people are becoming comfortable realizing that they're clicking a search result from their mobile phone and it's actually generating a call. So once that becomes more widespread, I think we'll see better conversion rates and better performance from our campaigns uh, across the board. So hopefully uh, there's good things uh, in the road. We've already seen some really positive results with, with call-only ads, call-only campaigns, and uh, I think that will only continue to improve, and that's a really good sign for the paper call industry. Um, and you know the growth of mobile click to call so looking forward to that for sure so that uh, that really wraps everything up today uh, hopefully this was of value to you if you have any further questions feel free to email us at contact at ringpartner.com or feel free to call us we are a phone business so call us at 1-888-656-3726 and definitely follow us on social media Twitter Facebook YouTube LinkedIn uh, check out our blog and subscribe to us 
and uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn more about paper call and uh, not just call only campaigns but paper call in general. So at this time I will uh, spend some time uh, going through the questions and seeing uh, how we can uh, how we can help you succeed with these campaigns. So feel free to to type those in and I'll try to cover as many uh, as I can. So a lot of questions about uh, whether this will be recorded. It is being recorded and we hope to have it up on our YouTube and blog uh, within the day. So you can look forward to that and then everyone will get an email with a link to that as well. If you don't, feel free to email contact at ringpartner.com and we'll, we'll be sure to get that to you. Um, I got a question here. Do call only campaigns compete with mobile campaigns? And I would assume that they that they do, um, but I'm not sure exactly how they do. I'm not sure how they perform up against some of those call extension, just the phone number ads, or you know some of the mobile app campaigns that are out there. That's something that we'd have to ask Google. But I feel like when things change over in June, I think that will kind of shake things up, and um, hopefully in a good way. And there will be more volume uh, for from call only ads. So hopefully that maybe doesn't answer your question, but hopefully that helps you. Uh, how should a company looking for call leads initiate working relationship with Ring Partner? Uh, call us, 1-888-656-3726, or shoot us an email at contact at ringpartner.com. Uh, what if I don't have a landing page that matches the number you're promoting? Uh, well, then you, in order to get that ad approved, you're going to have to uh, either make those match or tie that landing page to your Google Webmaster account or uh, use the conversion. But if you don't own that page, it's going to be uh, really hard for you to get that uh, approved. So what I suggest is, you know, there's a lot of uh, simple landing page builders out there. You can use WordPress, you can use Instapage, Unbounce, any of those services will allow you to create a really simple uh, landing page and then you you put your tracking phone number on that page that matches with the ad extension and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I've got a question here about uh, YouTube uh, video campaign. I'm uh, going to start ranking videos. Uh, it's one of their specialties. Should we set up a video to generate a direct phone call or have them go to a landing page? Uh, I would definitely encourage you to uh, plaster that video with uh, the phone number. You know, it's like when you see the infomercials uh, on TV, they repeat the phone number over and over and over or think about those radio ads. So I would have, you know, someone read out that phone number several times within that video, have the phone number all over the page. But if you're going to use uh, like an Invoca tracked phone number, what I would suggest is that you create a call promotion because then that phone number is assigned to your account and you can decide where that uh, phone number points rather than uh, using a direct phone number from the offer because if the campaign goes down, then you've lost that phone number and if you've embedded that within a video or, or put it within the recording, then uh, it's going to be tough to make that change. Uh, I've got a question here about, I noticed that I was getting clicks but no actual calls. I think people clicked and was brought to phone screen then backed out. How do we prevent this better? I think that really comes down to the keywords that you're using uh, as well as the ad text. So make sure that two of those are relative to one another so that people aren't clicking erroneous, erroneously. Uh, use the words call throughout the ad to make sure that they know that they're going to be clicking to call. Um, but also make sure that you're getting people at uh, with the keywords, make sure you're getting them at the right time in the buying cycle where they're looking to call someone. You don't want someone who's uh, searching for a chiropractor, um, sorry, you're searching for like a symptom if they've got a sore back, you know, they might just be looking for an online solution to uh, their problem. You want someone who's looking specifically for a chiropractor. So you want to make sure that you're getting them at the right time where they're ready to take action by calling. Uh, if they're, you know, searching for, you know, I have sciatica pain, they want to learn more about that, and they click on the ad, and they're expecting to go to a page, uh, it's going to be, it's not going to work out well, because, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting an action that they're not expecting. So, that's something to really keep in mind, make sure that those keywords are uh, driving the user at the time where they're actually looking to book an appointment. 
so that could be an issue. But there's a number of things that that kind of drive um, that where someone's clicking but not actually calling. Uh, you showed two different tracking options. When should you use option one and when should you use option two? Uh, I only use the tracking from the call extension within the ad text. Uh, no one is actually visiting the landing page on these call only campaigns. So you definitely want to make sure that uh, you're tracking the phone calls through the call extensions and uh, there's not much point in setting up the conversion tracking from the website unless you just want to make sure that your ads will get approved and that just shows ownership of the site. So I only use the call extension uh, tracking. Um, so I, I'm not sure which one you're saying is option one or two but use the call extension from the ad text. Uh, in the past you could get a, a quality score boost by having your keyword in the ad title. How can you do this and call out on the ads when they're ad there are no, are no titles? Uh, you have to put it somewhere within the description. So find a spot uh, within description line one or line two. Uh, definitely makes it a little trickier with less um, less space, but um, you know it's it's definitely worth finding the space in there and, and getting that boost because it's not only boosting your quality score, but it's also boosting your click through rate. And if you can bring up your click through rate then uh, Google will reward you for that and you'll pay less uh, CPC. So it's all connected. So definitely you know, find a way to get that keyword in there. In the future, will we pay for calls, not for clicks? Uh, ideally, but I, that's all up to Google. I know they've, you know, I don't think that they're allowing for you to pay for app installs, but I could be wrong. Um, so maybe, uh, I think that may tie into using that uh, bid optimization strategy and tying it to the CPA and then you can look at your stats and you'll still see clicks but maybe Google will perform a little better uh, optimizing for a CPA based on the duration. So that might be an option worth trying. Uh, la the landing pages have to be mobile optimized and fully functional, correct? Yes, definitely. Um, whether or not users are visiting it, uh, I'm not sure how Google's tying that quality score um, to the campaign, but I would say build a mobile optimized site first. This is mobile traffic, uh, even though the traffic is not actually hitting your uh, landing page. Uh, the zip submit on your page has to work. Yes, I would say that you know all the functionality of the page has to work, uh, but if I had a choice, I would wouldn't add the zip submit, I'd make a very basic page. Uh, I think the example I used may have had a zip submit, but uh, I wouldn't typically add that. Uh, another question here, when you say it, we are paying for a click, when, the cl when they click, does that not start a call from the phone? Yes, it absolutely does. It generates the call prompt and it's dependent on the browser. So uh, certain browsers may, or certain phones may just directly connect that click to the phone. But in most cases, like on an iPhone, it generates a call prompt. So it will you'll click on the ad and it will say call and the phone number, and then the user has to click again. So it's kind of a double opt-in to uh, actually making that, that call. Uh, does Google actually call the number on the landing page before approving it? Uh, I don't think so, but I'm sure that's entirely possible, and I'm sure it'll be something that's coming uh, down the road from Google. It seems like something that they would do. They have a lot of manual reviewers, so I could see them definitely calling the page or calling the phone number to ensure that it is a um, it is the actual business that you're ad advertising for. Uh, can you give me suggestions on targeting for my tax relief now? Uh, that's not a campaign that I've typically had a lot of success with in the past, um, but you know I'd be happy to get on a call uh, with you and discuss potential options there. If you're a publisher with Ring Partner, uh, just shoot an email to contact at Ring Partner, and I'm happy to kind of think about you know what you could do there. But the key is really to think about what what is the user. Uh, searching for, um, you know, they might, they're not going to search for uh, tax relief or, you know, tax debt, but they're more going to look like, you know, late on my taxes or, you know, what are the penalties for, you know, being late on my taxes or, you know, 
how do I solve my tax debt? So you really have to sort of think outside the box, uh, but that's not a campaign that I've done well with in the past, but I'm happy to try and help you out if I can. Uh, how much will the cost per click be, and do you have a good place to get these landing pages done? Uh, cost per click is really variable based on how you set up your campaign and the quality score that you get from Google. So there's, there's a lot involved there. That's a pretty uh, subjective question, and there's a lot of factors that contribute to um, what your actual cost per click will be. But your goal is definitely to create a campaign that Google loves so that you get a low cost per click. A uh, good place to have landing pages done uh, like I said, we use Unbounce. Uh, you can use Instapage, WordPress. But you know, if you want to go as far as you know, outsourcing this to Fiverr or you know some other service, I don't think that's a problem. Um, you know, you just want to make sure you own the domain uh, and make sure you find someone that's that's good for a reasonable price. And uh, you know, it's really just providing a page for Google to um, create, uh, or sorry, for Google to approve your campaign. How do we determine the average price Google charges for making the phone call? Is it comparable to AdWords pay-per-click PPC charges that we investigate in the Google Keyword Planner? Uh, you can you can go into the Keyword Planner and try to get an idea of what those clicks are going to cost because, again, they're, you're dealing with clicks. But usually you have to bid a little bit higher in order to uh, get phone calls because they do uh, typically convert a little better. But in order to get into those one and two positions, you have to bid a little higher. And to be honest, I never take the results from the Google Keyword Planner um, as factual. Uh, they're an idea. They're they're uh, an estimation. Uh, you never know what you're going to pay. But I've had keywords that were estimated to pay twenty dollars, and I was bidding five and still getting lots of traffic. So take that with a grain of salt, and uh, don't read too much into it, and try to find and discover your own keywords. Um, but use Google Keyword Planner as a as a good place to start. Can iframing a site work? Uh, I don't know what Google's stance is on this, but I know a while back you weren't allowed to frame anything, so I definitely would not do that, especially if you're framing a site that's not your own. So if you, you know, if you're iframing the advertiser's site within your own domain, I would highly suggest not doing that. Uh, what can you say about plumbing and locksmith? Also, I'm having problems with overspending on AdWords with live links. What can you say about that? Uh, plumbing and locksmith. Um, locksmith can be a bit of a challenge because sometimes if someone's in a car and they've driven from Seattle to uh, Portland and their phone picks up the location, uh, they may it may pick them up in Seattle and and redirect to a locksmith in that area. So that can be a bit of a challenge. But locksmith has been a pretty successful campaign regardless of that. Um, but what I would would do is is Try some broad terms around locksmith and uh, know that you're going to lose a little bit of money and see what sort of keywords sort of pop up. And I think you'll discover something that maybe someone else isn't advertising on. So you can find a lot of opportunities by using broad keywords and keep your budget low. Know that you may spend, a, you know, 25, 50 bucks a day and lose um, traffic or sorry, lose money. But uh, in the end, you'll gain traffic by um, discovering some new keywords you hadn't thought of. But try things like um, really think about, really put yourself in the user's or the caller's shoes and uh, think about what they're searching for. So they may not search for, you know, call a locksmith. They might search for things like, I locked myself out of the car or locked out of car, um, you know, need a new key, that sort of stuff. So really think about that, really dive deep and create an extensive list of keywords. Uh, plumbing is is fairly competitive, so what I would do is is go into a niche within that, whether it's emergency plumbers or bathroom renovations or you know something related to showers specifically or or you know drains or that sort of stuff, and really go into those niches and then look for extensive um, uh, keywords within those niches. So you have to go a little further, and again, you know, think about what the the user experience and what they're going to be looking for. Uh, are the most successful PPC offers the ones that are seasonal? Students going back to school, tutoring, tax season. Uh, I don't think that they're the most successful. Uh, there's definitely big opportunities uh, in things like that. Um, but it can be frustrating if you're setting up a campaign for tax season and 
Uh, you spend a lot of time setting it up, and then you make money in the short term, and then it's off, and you've got to wait until tax season picks up again. Uh, so there's definitely other opportunities. You know, people are locking their keys in their car all year long. They're having plumbing issues all year long. So there's there's definitely it's not the biggest opportunities, but it can be a good opportunity. Unfortunately, it's short it's short term. Uh, besides Google, what are other traffic sources that we can test and optimize? Uh, I would definitely take a look at Bing. Uh, they allow you to import your Google campaign over quite easily. Um, but we've got guys that do, you know, PPV. We've got guys that do Facebook. Um, but you know, Google is probably the best place to start, and probably drives the best quality calls out there. But you know, explore and try some other options. You know, look at display campaigns. We're happy to help you set up ring pools on display and allow you to track like you would any other affiliate link uh, with, you know, whether it's pixels or just passing through the parameters and the information that you want. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out to your, your team at Ring Partner and, uh, you know, let us help you um, succeed. And, you know, I'm available to jump on calls if, if people want to uh, learn a little bit more. Uh, and hopefully I can provide some value and help you help you grow. Uh, one last question here before we wrap it up. If you want to get you know any other um, questions in, uh, feel free to type them now, but uh, we may take this offline. And you know further questions after this, like I said, contact at ringpartner.com. Uh, send them there. Just you know put the the title of the webinar in the uh, subject and we'll do our best to answer those questions for you. And we do these uh, webinars on a monthly basis and our goal is to really just help educate our advertisers and publishers and help them you know succeed more with calls and become more profitable so uh, we're really happy to provide this and uh, glad to see that so many people turned out today so I will answer this last question and then uh, I'll let everyone uh, go off to their day and hopefully you know drive more calls with call only ads uh, do the distribution partners at Ring Partner usually push new offers on their publishers like other networks, or are they truly good offers? <laughs> I keep getting suggested different types of offers from different managers. So it really uh, depends. Um, if, a, if a campaign is on our network, uh, it's performing for someone. Uh, we don't usually leave campaigns on the network that, that don't work. So it really depends, and I would really you know, listen to what they have to say and then make your own decision. So, um, you know, like I said, I haven't done well with tax campaigns or other campaigns, but we have success with locksmith or, or plumbers or roofing. Um, so, you know, try to put your own um, interpretation on that of what you think a good campaign is. Listen to how they sell it to you and, and see what they're saying, but then you've got to try and figure out uh, what's going to work for you, or if you have some insights into that campaign, you know, if you know, you know what it's like to have tax debt, or you've worked uh, for a tax relief company, you're definitely going to have some insight. You're going to have more than I would have on that campaign. So, you know, the distribution managers aren't trying to push campaigns that uh, aren't successful. They're trying to help you, uh, and usually they're seeing some success uh, elsewhere with with those campaigns. So that's why they would push them, but. You know, other than the new campaigns on the network, if they've been on the network for a long time, guaranteed, uh, you know, publishers are succeeding with it. So there is a way to succeed with those. And uh, the last question, I'll just finish off with best offer to start right now. Um, I, I always say uh, Live Links is a good campaign just because uh, the the whole point of Live Links is, is calling. So it's a good campaign to kind of cut your teeth with and, and try it out. Um, but it can be very, very competitive. What I would pick to start is probably something in home services. There's so many different categories from plumbers to locksmith, roofers, uh, you name it. There's bound to be something in there uh, that you know something about or you have a friend that's a, you know does lawn care or um, something like that. Ask them for some insights and uh, you know go after those campaigns because um, that localized looking for a plumber, looking for a veterinarian, that sort of stuff, uh, really does work well and it's a, a great place for publishers to start. So so with that I will wrap things up. Uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, thanks uh, to everyone that joined us today. Uh, it was really uh, great to present on this topic and there's a lot of great questions and uh, I wish you all the best of luck with call only ads and I look forward to June 2015 and hoping that uh, things really really open up for opportunities around call only and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks.